Greetings, welcome to Family Worship. Trust you had a great day. Sorry we are a little off time because we had a little issues. <clears throat> but we thank you for joining us. I trust your day was good. I know sometimes that's a lot to ask for because in these days um, things can get out of whack. But we know that God is in control and in spite of difficulties, in spite of uh, the turbulence in the world, and that's what we have been talking about really because as, as it gets to the close of this world history, the uh, the dramas are going to become more tense, uh, more ex existential, and they're going to, and it's going to be rough times for us. Uh, we might uh, be concerned, and rightly so, about the gas price and all the inflation right now. Um, <clears throat> but I can tell you that we haven't seen trouble yet because um, we really are, are not in any deep trouble. I would say Ukraine, people in Ukraine and some parts of the world, they are in um, severe and serious trouble, uh, losing their loved ones and being displaced from their homes and, you know, it's, it's rough mentally, physically and all around. So we know no one is exempt, nobody in this world is exempt from problem. Albeit some might have different types but there is coming a time when we will all have the same problem. It is the time of Jacob's trouble. The Bible tells us the time of Jacob's trouble. And then the great time of trouble. So we haven't seen trouble yet. We have been reading about these things and when they come, uh, when they materialize, we're surprised, yes, but that's human. That's human um, reaction or the human uh, respond from time to time. We, we know about it. Some of us may know about the prophecies and that God's word is sure and that whatever he has written through is inspired Moth pieces are to his inspired prophets, seers, as they were called. It will happen. God's integrity is his righteousness. And so, nothing that is written, and don't let anybody fool you about the Bible is this and the Bible is that. The Bible is the word of God. He uses men to write. Of course, they can use their experience, but they cannot deviate from the Word of God. Let me remind you of the story of, <clears throat> of, <clears throat> of Moab. Uh, um, trying to, if I have the right story, <clears throat> Balak, Balaam, I'm sorry. Balak, it's in, it can be found in numbers. Uh, Balak and Balaam. Even if man wanted to, to twist the word of God, he could not. And he cannot, even today. Man cannot twist the word of God. Balaam wanted the money. He was a prophet of God. He was offered money from Bela, King Bela, and he was determined to curse Israel. But the word of God, he cannot curse whom God has have blessed, has blessed. 
<coughs> and I hope you get the lesson. Who God blesses, no man curse. And that is why you must know that only God can. <coughs> the word of God. He esteems his word above his name. So nobody can fool around God's word. And so those who want to build up all the philosophy you can muster and all the things you can concoct at this time, watch out. The word of God is coming for you one way or another. Either you accept and repent and be saved or you be condemned to die eventually. All right? So, nobody can tamper with God's word. That's why Balaam was trying to do. And God used a donkey, a jackass, some of us call that, or an ass. Whichever language you use for a donkey, right? They call him the beast of burden. God used a donkey to speak to his prophet. Huh. That's our God. That's the God we serve. And tell, don't let anybody fool you about the word of God. The Bible is written by men inspired by God and they can't twist. God has given men a leeway to write their, in their own experience and all that, but that doesn't change what God is saying. Amen? God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Tell somebody, share this message. We are going to talk tonight about the uh, modern Assyria. Uh, those who are joining this series for the first time, welcome. And we have been dealing with the greatest of all wars. The greatest of all wars. No, that's not the war in you, 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 Ukraine. Right? That's not the war that uh, the massacre that uh, Putin in Russia is raging on, on Ukraine. And that's not war in Yemen or whatever war in Africa because we don't want to have to be looking on one place and ignoring others all over the world right now you have all different types of wars and rumors of war uh, and people are suffering but I'm talking about the greatest of all wars this war will be fought against Jerusalem, right there in the Middle East, where these nations really we are talking about birth. Pray with us, please. Oh, Father, we are so grateful that you have been so good, so kind to us, so long-suffering. You are bearing with our sin and all our pride and all our selfishness all our bad behavior, all our doubts, you are bearing with us. But we are glad. We are glad that you have a church, you have a people whom you have bestowed your truth with. And yes, everyone involved will not be faithful to you. But thank God, thank you that many have been faithful from the beginning whether one or two in the case of um, Cain and Abel, Abel, there was only one. And so you have guided your truth, guided your movement all the way. And we are, re 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 and we are recipients of all that you have allowed to come down to our time. Bless everyone here, bless each family 
anoint each one and teach us as we wait on you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Welcome, thank you. We're glad that you are here. So, <clears throat> it is important to know that what the prophets of old, all the prophets in the Bible have written, they have written more so for our time, the latter days, than for their time. We have read those uh, <clears throat> scriptures and inspired writings and we tonight we will well let me just try and find one and read to you again um, <clears throat> I <clears throat> ask that you will go back to videos that you have seen we are posting and, and um, take, uh, take some time to listen because we know not everyone wants to listen these days, but take some time and we appreciate those who listen and use, open your Bible at the same time and prove that what we are saying is the Word of God. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to read from Testimonies to Ministers and Gospel Workers and this is taken from page 116 <clears throat> as we near the close of this world world's history the prophecies relating to the last days especially demand our study the last book of the new Te new testament scriptures is full of truth that we need to understand. Satan has blinded the mind of many so that they have been glad of any excuse for not making their revelation, their study. I hope you got that. Satan um, <clears throat> has blinded the minds. Tell me about that. If Satan has blinded our minds, that is a critical uh, condition for us. Because you know what's happening there? There is nothing that we can comprehend that God has given us. <clears throat> That's, that's a critical uh, state to be in, as God's people or as people in general. But for those who have this message, and it's not a force, it's, it's our will, our free will, our choice, that Satan has blinded the minds of many so that they have been glad of any excuse for not making the revelation their studies. But Christ, through his servant John, has declared what shall be in the last days. And he says, Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the word of the prophecy, and keep those saying which are written therein. Blessed are they which hear, which readeth and then hear. So no excuse if you can't read. You will hear. God will make a way for those who can't read to hear his word. <clears throat> and that they may keep those things, not just hear them like, and, it, and, and let it be like water on a dog's back, it just fall off, uh, or oil and water just float, you know. <clears throat> One 
to be engraved, to be submerged in the Word of God. Keep the Word of God. Keep those things which are written. All right, we'll just stop with one tonight. It's Thursday, and we have, we'll, we'll try to be here Friday and at 7.30 again and, and Saturday, which is Sabbath. Again, <laughs> just briefly, we have Christ represented right now, at this minute, pleading his blood, my blood, my blood, my blood, my blood, on our behalf. He is right there in the sanctuary, heavenly sanctuary, before the sanctuary throne, and as a judgment is taking place, he is doing that. He is like a bleeding, injured lamb. That's our Christ. However, he is equipped with seven horns. And as from time to time, uh, make sure that we understand that the prophecies are the word of Christ himself, personally. Prophecies are not man's word. So let nobody fool you that Prophecies are not the love of Christ. All right? So what we have is that the lamb equipped with seven horns, seven <clears throat> complete, perfect number. So it uh, comes out here in Matthew chapter <clears throat> 28 and 18 that it tells us that Christ to Christ has been given all power in heaven and in earth. <clears throat> and so, from time to time, we are saying that <clears throat> God is all and in all. He also has seven eyes, which represent the seven spirits, meaning that all the true, <clears throat> throughout all the period of, of our uh, redemption time he has given us all right and he's the author he's author of all truth and he is he he has all the power so what man is doing <clears throat> man is limited as you know because these guys, they just rise up and two tools, they are gone. <clears throat> One of the concerns right now is about Ukraine, and, and not, not even Ukraine so much, about Putin and his um, hands on the nuclear, that we are going to have a nuclear holocaust. All right? But God <coughs> didn't... God is not going to allow him to do that. God has a work to do through his church. A final work called the loud cry. When he will save the people who are in the bondage, in Satan's prison right now. A lot of people are in Satan's prison uh, or a detention center, um, or on death row, or God is going to use a people to save them. That's what we are talking about. That's right in the midst of the final world war. All right, so Assyria is key that we um, <clears throat> understand these uh, <clears throat> factors, are these players in the final um, drama of earth history. Now let me tell you something. We have looked at Assyria and we have looked at Babylon in the past. Many of us 
as Seventh-day Adventists, we just accept the, what we have been told, really, that what we have is ancient Babylon and modern Babylon in the form of the, the papacy or the Roman Church and the Dark Ages. Uh, you know, we are up to date on that. No problem. But just as God has written the prophecy and the history together, because what he has written in the past must come. God is God always double up. Right? What he has written in the past will come to light in the present. Babylon, he put he strategically put Babylon exactly where Babylon should be. And that's why, why we have seen that Babylon came straight off as, as a kingdom, as the first kingdom right off the, 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 the Tower of Babel, right? But Babylon declined <clears throat> while Assyria, the Assyrian power, came, took center stage, and, and um, positioned itself to rule the world, went into the promised land and captured the ten tribes of Israel and scattered them and um, <clears throat> do a sort of do a rev revolution in this city because what we know is that Babylonian rape and, and remarried <coughs> into intermarried to the Israelites and so we have they replaced God's people in the land and there we have the Samaritans. Uh, <coughs> so that's how we get the Samaritans from what left over of um, Assyria's uh, uh, captivity and his invasion. You see, man has been invading other countries. And that's what Assyria did also. Assyria invaded and he took the spoils, he killed kings and all type of warriors and then he builds up his kingdom. Alright? And he became the most powerful um, power but he was uh, with the city Nineveh. But of course Babylon came back and Nineveh was captured because Nineveh is the capital of Assyria. And of course <clears throat> Babylon took center stage and right there and then we have Babylon as a universal power in its rightful place. And the Bible tells us about Babylon, Medo, Persia, Greece, and Rome. All right. So we have that so much for that regarding our history that we have talked about, but we have to do a little review before we get back into it. Now what we have here, we are going into this, and we will see that... Assyria is some so is a nation that we have to 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 pay attention to in the line of prophecy because why the Bible Isaiah fourteen twenty five tells us that Assyria will fall in the land. It has never happened. And uh, the Bible also tells us in Isaiah 8 that Assyria will break a confederacy. Assyria will break a confederacy and Assyria will call for a confederacy, will form a confederacy. If you ask what a confederacy is, uh, well that is when a part of God's church, an apostate part of the church, 
we'll talk about that more. We'll join hands or invite a world or a heathen nation to join in. That means you have the church, the apostate part of the church, join the heathen, right? So they form an alliance. You, you've been hearing about alliance a lot right now. The, the, the allied of NATO and the allied, they build up a strong force. And you have been hearing about Putin and what allied he has. However, <clears throat> that happened, and we look at that, and uh, Syria, I mean, Israel, the apostate nation, the apostate church will join and then they will try to destroy the faithful part of the church, or the faithful church. That's why we have, uh, where we're going in Isaiah tells us that Syria and Israel, Israel join force with Syria. Israel, which is God's church, join force with Syria and in order to fight Judah. But God told them that it will not happen. Uh, all right, let's do what we can do tonight because we have ways to go. We have quite a number of subtopic in order to bring all this together. All right. Um, <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah chapter 7. Bibles are open. <clears throat> We'll read. And it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jothan, son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that Rizin, the king of Assyria, and Pekal, Pekal the, the son of Remaliah, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. And it was told the house of David, same Israel, Judah, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim, and his heart was moved. And the heart of his people, as the trees of the woods, are moved with the wind. Can you imagine? These day, those days, really, and we're seeing it playing out here today, that uh, <clears throat> when Judah heard what was taking place, the people shake, or they shook like a leaf, like the trees in a heavy wind. It is in those days there were, when Israel, when the children of Israel were about to cross over Jordan, or when they near Jordan, because some of the heathen nations are not in the promised land, but outside, I mean across Jordan. And the children of Israel had to take them out also under God's order. God has had his reason why he had to take out the Moabites, the Amorites, the Hittites, 
Hezitites, all of those. But we'll read about them. I'm just saying that they were afraid to when the children of Israel were coming. But this we are focusing on is the fact that they were afraid. They were afraid, but then said the Lord. Then said who? Then said the Lord unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz, right? Though an Shiri Jasob, thy son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the highway of the fuller's field. So that's verses Isaiah chapter 7 and verses 1 to 3. Now, <clears throat> so here's it that this nation, these people, the Israelites, were threatening to go up and war against God's church or their brothers, but the confederate. Let me tell you right now, God hates confederacy. All right? God hates confederacy. I want you to underscore that and <clears throat> let's watch what we are saying. Now, God himself intervened and told his servant, the king of Israel, the king of Judah, that he said that he told Isaiah to go and tell him that he should not be afraid, meet him. Um, so, This, really, this, what we are looking at here, <clears throat> is something that will have its double. Because remember, we are following, we are following Assyria. But here, Assyria is coming into play now. We are going to read a little more. We're going to read a little more. Verse 4. And say unto him, Take heed and be quiet. Uh, God is sending a message to his people. Don't be afraid. Be quiet, fear not. Neither be faint hearted, for the two tails of these smoking firebrands God is describing the confederacy what does he call them these two tails of smoking firebrands huh. no doubt they were they were brisking and they were preparing you recall when the when um, Putin was <clears throat> amassing his troops at Ukraine but he was so deceptive and lie because he didn't tell them that they were going to he was coming to invade the whole country but anyway God whatever plan they are making God said don't be afraid pay attention to this this is a foundation that we will need for our time our existence our understanding of God's word. Here we have a church joining with the world to fight some church people. Let me say this again. Here we have the church folk
confederating, making alliance with the police force or some country military force, hear me out on this, to fight or to war. And you know what war brings, right? To slaughter, to kill, to man, to amper, to annihilate God's true people. Watch this carefully. But God himself says, don't be afraid. Because these two tales of smoking firebrands for the fierce anger of Rezin with Syria and of the son of Remeliah, because Syria, Ephraim, remember Ephraim is the same Israel, Tentra. Ephraim, because Syria, the civil power, and Ephraim, the religious folk, and the son of Remeliah, have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, Let us go up against Judah, God's true church, and vex it. And let us make a breach therein for us and set a king in the midst of it, even the son of Tabial. So you recall or watch current events. That's why the Lord wants us to educate ourselves in current events because the Bible right everything that the Bible records. Notice that the Bible records all the political um, system and what they were doing. That's what we're talking about here. Honey, my water is finished. Thank you. All right? So, the Lord send this prophet to comfort his people, comfort the leader that, verse 7, Thus saith the Lord God, It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. It shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. Verse 8. For the head of Syria is Damascus. And the head of Damascus is risen, and within three score and five years, sixty five years, all right, Ephraim shall Ephraim be broken that it be not a people. Ephraim shall be broken that it be not a people. Israel shall be broken, that Israel will not be a people. That's the word of God. Did this fulfill? Uh, what of the Lord speak again unto Ahaz saying, I remember Ahaz was God, supposed to be faithful. That's why we must never doubt God, right? When we doubt God, we make him a liar. 
When we doubt God, we crucify him afresh. When I tell you that God has a special work for Seventh-day Adventists to do, and it is written, it is in the annals of the book, it is in these prophecies, and we know that because the word has been, it is clear, God reveal his word to a people always to bring to all. No, God is not never a partiality. It is never a partiality, but that's God's method. Whether we want to follow his method is another thing, but that doesn't change what he has predicted. So this <coughs> moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ea, saying, <coughs> Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. So you imagine God himself realize that this mortal man don't believe God Almighty. So God said, all right, ask a sign. Ask me a sign, he adds. Verse 11. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But he has said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. <laughs> he has strength his thing, or doing his thing, like we do. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David. It is, sorry, is it? A small thing for you to weary men, but will you weary my God also? So you see, I want you to examine the extent to which God is going, reasoning with Ahaz, regarding this issue because I told you that God is writing prophecy and he's writing history at the same time because this is going to repeat itself and you are going to see the beauty of it if you understand this foundation. So God plead to the house of Israel. Remember now, we are dealing with God's people, but in two sides. One, that is confederating one set, that is confederating or that is forming an alliance with the world, to vex God's people, the church. God intervened. Why? God doesn't give everybody his word. He's dealing with Judah and he's dealing with Ahaz. So he has to come and deal with them. Right? He's focusing on them. Don't miss this point. They were he was unfaithful as a leader. He was unfaithful. He didn't have any faith in God. But God 
was using him for this purpose. God was telling, so God came to him and he said, Come on, can you weary me? You, yes, you can weary men. But can you weary God? Ask me a sign. Yes. Yes, did not ask him. He has said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Lord. Say he is tempting the Lord. Can we regard? But God gave him a sign anyway. Ah, watch this sign. Watch this sign. Watch this sign. Therefore, verse, verse 30, let's read verse 13 first. And Laura said, Here we go. Okay, I read that. Verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Butter and honey shall he eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. God gave Ears a sign. And who is the sign? Emmanuel. Emmanuel, a virgin. Nobody can miss that. Nobody can miss this. This was the sign given to Ahaz way back there. I want to give you a hint. This is 700 years before Christ came. Pay attention. This is where you have to concentrate. This is where you... Remember we read about Satan taking over the mind so that you don't understand Revelation? Drive him out right now because this is key. To the end time met, the end time revelation, the end time fulfillment. God gave him a sign, and the sign was verse 14. Therefore, Isaiah chapter 7. Open your Bibles. Therefore, the Lord Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name. Emmanuel. Uh, what, uh, what happened here now in verse 15? Crucial. Butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. So we know that this is Christ, and he's gonna, the sign is that butter and honey shall he eat in order to know, to refuse, or to pick good out of evil. This is the sign. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, verse 16, the land that thou abhorreth shall be forsaken of both her kings. This is deep. This is deep. <clears throat> this is deep. The land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her. Both 
or kings, that being the confederation, the alliance will be smashed of both Israel and or Ephraim and Syria. Alright? Ephraim and Syria who formed the alliance against God's people. God gave him a sign that a virgin shall have a child, Emmanuel, call his name Emmanuel, and Emmanuel shall eat butter and honey that he may know to refuse. But look, look at what he said. In verse 16, it said, Before the child knows to refuse the evil and choose the good, the land shall be abort. The land that do abort shall be forsaken. That means the confederacy, God will destroy the confederacy. Both kings that he abort. Oh. This is something. I'll get back to, we're going to read to 20. Let me read to 20. Verse 17. The Lord shall bring upon thee and upon thy people and upon thy father's house days that have not come from the day that Ephraim departed from Judah, even the king of Assyria. So Assyria now, that was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar, now here he is portrayed. God is bringing him alive in the history and the prophecy. So, and it shall come to pass in that day, verse 18 of chapter 7, Isaiah, we are still. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall hiss for the fly that is in the uttermost part of the river of Egypt and for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. They shall come and shall rest, all of them in the desolate valleys, the desolate valleys, and in the holes of the rocks, and upon all thrones, and upon all bushes. Verse 20 says, In the same day shall the Lord shave with razor, that is hired, namely, by them beyond the river, by the king of Assyria, the head and the hair of the feet, and it shall be consumed, all, and it shall also consume the beard. So it is clear. Here the Lord is telling his folk, his church, his people, Judah, that Assyria will destroy. God will use Assyria to dismantle their plan. God is here telling Judah that Assyria will be involved 
bringing an end to this alliance, this evil alliance. I read a thought from Inspiration, 13th Symbolic Code, number 3, page 5. Judah was told, if he will not believe, surely he shall not be established. In other words, Judah was told that if they did not believe what God was telling them, they would lose out. Their survival, therefore, was wholly, wholly conditional on their complete belief in God's promise. Only that the alliance formed against them would fail. <coughs> the alliance formed against Judah would fail. And here is where. So what we have learned tonight we have learned that, first of all, our topic is modern Assyria. Who? Oh, modern Assyria. We have the history of Assyria and where it operated and where and that it was it was demolished and was no more as a nation but God is bringing Assyria all through because the significance of this is that just as we have modern Babylon Modern Assyria was there before. Modern Babylon is answering to the church and state alliance that we had. And but here is the foundation is being set. And as it reveals itself, notice that what we have is Judah, Israel, and we have Syria and Assyria. We refer to them as what happened in the past will reveal itself in the future. It's called type or types and antitypes. This is as far as we will go. I'll leave you with a few um, other references or scripture passages that you may read. and We will review them when we come back. Um, Israel the ten tribes were taken away in the past by Assyria started in 734 the first batch and then eventually finished taken captive in 721 I want you to read about those in 2nd Kings I mean 2nd Chronicles 28 